Mr. Maulay Hafid Al Alami, Distinguished Minister of Industry, Trade and Green and Digital Economy, Government of Morocco, Mr. Timo Harakka, Distinguished Finland's Minister of Transport and Communications, Mr. John Whittingdale, Distinguished Minister of State for Media and Data, Government of UK, Mr. Sunjay Joshi, Chairman ORF, Good Friend Dr. Samir Saran, President ORF, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here once again delivering my seventh inaugural address of Sci-Fi. The well-known India Conference on Technology, Security and Society. My very warm greetings to all my ministerial friends, delegates and other colleagues. The theme of this year's conference has been very aptly chosen as the pandemic and digital dystopia. We are living under very, very challenging times. The COVID pandemic has really unsettled the whole world. It has caused enormous damage to human life, to economy, to social cohesion and also movement. Yet there is no effective medicine. Let's pray it comes at the earliest. But the nature of challenge and the enormity of uh, suffering this pandemic has caused is also a time for us to seriously reflect as to how much limited are our, are our potentials. We have to learn to improve more, to innovate more and also to garner our inner strength and resources more to respond effectively to a challenge like this. Our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, took heroic efforts in addressing this problem right from day one, be it lockdown, be it leading from the front, be it educating the people of India, being partnering with the states. We were able to give a cohesive response and in spite of the loss of life, which is always regrettable anywhere in the world, in the size of India's population of 1.3 billion plus, it offers a measure of some assurance that many of the initiatives which you have taken could prevent unnecessary loss of life more. And what is a matter of glimmer of hope is more than 85% of the recovery. Yet the fight goes on. But amidst all these challenges, the real beacon of light came when technology played its part. I am very happy to share with you in the lockdown, when there was no movement on roads, there was no movement of rail, there was no movement in the sky. My all the three departments, the communication, the mobile, the internet in the Ministry of Communication, the postal operations in the Ministry of Communications and the IT in application of IT in containing this virus was in full play and was able to really connect the people of the country through mobile phone, through internet and a whole range of other digital connectivity which could afford some degree of relief and also hearing the voice of their relatives and friends. India is a powerhouse of IT, you all know it. Our companies have acquired global resonance because of the extraordinary uh, professional 
caliber of our IT professionals. India is home to many of the backhand offices, all the giants of the global IT ecosystem are present in India. Now, once the lockdown was there, how could they work? Then I liberalized the entire ecosystem of work from home. And I'm very happy to tell you that 85% of Indians in the digital ecosystem could work from home. And now we are contemplating to have a scenario that we can possibly permit to work from anywhere. These are some of the initiatives which helped the country continue to work and continue to help people in this overpowering uh, distress which the pandemic brought about. But more specifically, we could really draw upon the large pool of our digital ecosystem which we have developed in the last few years under the Digital India program that could really bring a lot of help to the ordinary Indians in this very challenging times. Obviously, COVID is contagious and the first requirement was to have a digital tool whereby contract tracing could be concretized and people can be warned that you have come in contact with someone, please be on guard. And then we came with Arogya Setu app which has been downloaded by 160 million Indians. It works in a very simple manner. If you have come in contact with someone who is affected or likely to be affected, it gives you a signal and you have to be on guard. And then your entire contact of friends and family with whom you have interacted also needs to be conveyed that they need to take proper protective measures. And the entire data is for a very, very limited period. But this very innovative uh, instrument developed by our IT, uh, Ministry of Electronics along with some private sector today has become a big boom. You are aware that under the Digital India program, we came with the idea of DBT, Direct Benefit Transfer. We open bank account of poor people, almost 370 million bank accounts of the poor, were opened who were out of the banking system. And we started sending all the welfare measures to the bank account directly. Be it the central government's welfare measure or the state government's welfare measure. This we call the DBT, Direct Benefit Transfer. In more than 400 welfare programs, we have sent uh, money worth 12 lakh crore, that is 172 billion US dollars. And we have saved 1.70 lakh crore, that is 23 billion US dollars, which is to be pocketed by middlemen or fictitious claimants. This has been our positive experience for the last close to five years. We use that in a very, very decisive way in the COVID when we transferred huge amount of government welfare programs to more than 420 million poor and needy people, financial assistance under different scheme under the pandemic. More than 200 million women have been receiving rupees 500 per month into their bank account every month. Though we have a huge network of banks, their branches, but India is a huge country. People stuck up during lockdown in villages also needed to be given cash through a digital system. There was no ATM. How to go about? Then, my India Post system, you'll be happy to know, deliver uh, and disburse 
close to 664 million US dollars approximately to poor people in various parts, in villages, with my postman going even on a boat crossing a river in the remotest part of the country through a mobile app to deliver them digital payments. For the sake of farmers, we are doing a very extraordinary program initiated by the Prime Minister where we are we have given to 10 million farmers close to 93,000 crores that is approximately 13 billion US dollars direct benefit transfer almost 2,000 rupees every three months so that they can purchase their seeds etc. All this only showed as to how digital technologies have been leveraged to the maximum during these challenging times. Therefore, whatever name you call the pandemic or the digital dystopia, this dystopia, whether uncertainty or ambiguity, whatever you call it, some degree of sanity was surely brought about by the digital ecosystem during these challenging times which the humanity has not seen in the last so many years. While COVID has caused enormous problem, suffering, COVID has also established one thing. Every challenge brings an opportunity. And the challenge has COVID has once for all established the potential of the digital technologies as to what extent they can come to the aid of common people even during the most challenging time. Therefore, technology has to play all the more critical role in our lives. And as I have been saying earlier, the Digital India program which our Prime Minister launched more than five years ago has a very simple meaning. Digital India means empowering ordinary Indians with the power of technology. Bring in digital inclusion by bridging the digital divide. And whether it's programs like direct benefit transfer, e-hospital, uh, e-visa, e-education, e-scholarship, e-governance, all these today are changing in a very meaningful way the quality of life of ordinary Indians. And therefore all the public platforms, be it the direct benefit transfer or the extraordinary initiative of Aadhaar, the digital identity to supplement the physical identity, then Aishman Bharat, namely uh, helping the medical needs of millions of Indians through a digital platform, one country, one tax, the GSTN, one country, one ration card, India becoming a major player globally in the field of digital payment to the UPI. All these are public platforms which are being channelized and garnered to improve the quality of life of ordinary Indians. On the 15th of August, our Prime Minister announced that we shall be very soon launching a public digital health platform so that the health parameters of all the Indians are included through a proper health digital identity. Our Prime Minister is equally keen that along with physical infrastructure, the digital infrastructure must also carry great speed in terms of delivery and implementation and therefore in the pursuit of having a 
eBay. He has announced a massive program of having optical fiber reach in all the 600,000 villages of India in the coming 1,000 days. It is a massive program and you can understand if internet quality internet is, reaches out to every village of India, what impact is going to make on the entire process of empowerment. We are also very clear that India has to play a big role also in strengthening the process of global economy as well. The Art Nirbhar program the PM has launched Atnirbhar Bharat uh, does not mean an India in isolation. It means an India playing an important role as a major economy to help the world economy grow. We are very keen that India become a trusted player in the global value and supply chain. And India has the right credentials also. By way of an example, I can tell while there have been a recession globally, including in India, because of the unforeseen problem created by COVID, my Department of Technology and Communications registered a 7.1% growth even during these challenging times. Google has made investment of 10 billion, Facebook made investment of 5.7 billion, and Qualcomm has invested 97 million. Therefore, India continues to be a very favorable destination even of global investment during these challenging times. India today has the third biggest startup ecosystem in the world. We have become the second biggest mobile manufacturer in the world. Very keen to become number one too. And therefore, in addition to our digital delivery of services and IT services, in which Indian companies and professionals have left their global imprint, now we also want India to become a good and uh, effective, good and promising center of manufacturing, both software products and also in electronic manufacturing. And therefore, just to give an example, during the height of COVID, I announced a program of production link incentive in case of mobile manufacturing. Uh, you know that in, uh, India has only two mobile factories when we had come to power in 2014. Now India is home to 250 plus mobile factories and some of the best brands of the world have come to India. And based upon the experience of that success, we further expand that program and came with the initiative of production link incentive, whereby we wish to help incentive link to your production, including your capacity for exports. And I I announced this policy in April 2020, height of COVID, and the last date of application was 31st July 2020, height of COVID. And I'm very happy to tell you, all the top brands of the world, our idea was five global champions and five Indian champions, Indian companies. All the top brands of the world have applied, be it Apple, through their contract manufacturers, Foxconn, Vistron, Pegatron, Samsung and others, component manufacturers and also Indian companies. And cumulatively, they have committed to <coughs> manufacture products worth $150 billion in the coming five years, $150 billion, giving job to nearly 900,000, including a lot of ancillary units promotion. And they will be largely for exports. India has great potential for further becoming a part of the global supply chain because of 
our credentials because of our professionals and the way we are a country governed by rule of law by democracy by accountable government and open society and in view of the challenges of the times which we are witnessing i would very earnestly recommend that instead of having your production only at in one country it is better to explore others too and india fits in a bill we are very very particular about safety and security as well you know it very clear when we heard reports that there have been some technology platforms which have the dangerous potential to uh, steal data of indians or also create serious threat to security safety and defense of india we did not hesitate in taking action at all and we will not hesitate our view is very clear this digital space is a space for a robust constructive open engagement and that we welcome today we encourage indian app manufacturers to come with ideas and they have come with robust ideas we are encouraging programs for in innovative initi initiatives for young indians in the far flung areas in the small towns of india giving them incentive good products innovative products app which have come in the incentive program we are going to incentivize them it is a very clear route of foreign direct investment as a, as well come uh, follow the norms and invest yourself as i indicated but if anyone tries to take liberties with our security or safety or defense then we will take action as we have taken let the rules of the game be very clear digital ecosystem keeps on expanding the innovative mind keeps on coming with new and new platforms obviously artificial intelligence is very important and our prime minister is very keen that we must leverage the potential of this powerful technological innovation which we call artificial intelligence but our view is also very clear that artificial intelligence must bring in a smile on the face of ordinary indians it must help in the field of healthcare in the field of education in the field of agriculture ai needs a lot of data and india's huge population the digital profile of 1.21 billion mobile phone 1.26 billion aadhar card nearly 700 million internet penetration and a very tech savvy mind of ordinary indians leads to production of massive data data is the oxygen for ai but this data has to be free from all the scourges of threat of privacy there must be element of consent for ordinary indians when the data is taken and therefore we have come with data protection law whereby we have made provisions for consent to be taken as a mandatory precondition on a voluntary basis before you agree to use their data but we are also cognizant of the fact that some movement of data is important for digital economy we want india to be a big center of data refinement data cleaning data processing which we all collectively call data refining but it has to be by pres through prescribed norms and most important india shall not countenance any compromise on the security and safety of the data of indians and our data sovereignty but the huge potential with data economy offers i am told in the coming 5 years itself the data economy that means ai 
and data alone can add up to 400 to 500 billion to India's GDP by 2025. That is exciting potential. And I request the world to join in this process. Because what India offers is a fine combination of a, of a democracy, of a government elected by the people, of an inherent constitutional accountable process, and a large pool of professionals, and most important, demographic dividend, which is keen to lap up and tap every opportunity. This is how I think India can play a very stellar role in the emerging contours of AI. We have already have set up several centers of excellence. We have a robust policy. We have developed a national portal for artificial intelligence. And also, we, are, we have become a founder member of the Global Partnership on Artificial Intelligence. We are going to undertake a huge program of future skillings as well to enable 400,000 employees of our IT workforce to enable them to prepare for new jobs. But the cyberspace is also to be safe and secure. And therefore, the safety and security of the cyberspace has to be maintained for which a global partnership is needed. If internet is a great human innovation, it must, be, it must remain safe and secure from rogue elements, from extremism, from terrorism, who almost abuse this technology to subserve their own program of hatred and also destabilization. I think these are some of the larger narratives which we need to properly be, um, need to safeguard against. AI, in order to become successful, must properly address the concerns of ethics. AI can never substitute human mind, can never take the place of values of human existence, the values of ethics, the values of consciousness, the values of emotions. They must continue to govern our life an AI instrument must become supplemental to that. AI should not lead to weaponization, as our Prime Minister has rightly called time and again. But friends, in spite of these challenging times, the future will remain brighter only if the inclusion remains the important component of technological discourse. If Digital India was for digital inclusion, AI should also bring in inclusion and empowerment of ordinary people. There must be ethical and transparency driven algorithm and there should not be any attempt of monopoly of hegemony. These are some of the general ideas which I thought I must share with you. It is always a pleasure to come to Sci-Fi Conference. Sanjay and Samir are good friends and the Observer Foundation is doing a good job, has developed itself as a very crucial and critical think tank of the country. My greetings once again. Thank you. Jai Hind.